Hey guys, Scott here for yet another installment of Scott's Thoughts. So, I didn't want to record and put this episode out yesterday. Today is September 12th. Um, but I did want to go ahead and get all of my thoughts uh, down on video. Not just for you guys, but also for the future. I'm going to be saving this video file and I'll probably look at it again in a few years. So, if you haven't figured it out by now, I want to talk about September 11th. Um, my personal experiences, I want to talk about that. And also my, my general thoughts on things. This is something that I actually talked with my students uh, about today at school. Yeah, they offered some really interesting things to me because their perspective is a bit different than mine. And it's uh, going to be similar to some of my viewers because I know some of my viewers are fairly young. Um, and it's, it's just something interesting because I grew up in 1990s America as well as 2000s America. And I can tell you that there is, in fact, a very big difference between those two realities, as it were. So, just to recount my own personal experiences with September 11th, um, I was, believe it or not, actually in the very class that I now teach today as a student on September 11th. Um, I was a, a sixth grader, I was 11 years old, um, and I was in study hall. <laughs> so, uh, that was an interest. It's an interesting experience to now be on the flip side of that equation. But anyway, um, I remember, and of course I, I need to go ahead and say I am from the Washington DC area. I live in Northern Virginia, not going to say where, but, <laughs> um, I, I am in Northern Virginia and many of my classmates, friends worked, uh, at the Pentagon and in the surrounding area. And the Pentagon is about 30 miles from my house. So, um, so around, I want to say 9 a.m., 9.30 a.m. at school, um, everybody's parents started coming and getting their kids out for early dismissal. And no, nobody, no staff at my school, um, no staff at my school were telling anybody what was going on, really. Some, some were, but for the most part, no, nobody was saying what was going on. And I just remember being very confused about what was going on and there being a lot of students being taken out uh, early. And I'd say by the time I went home on the bus, about 70% of the students in the school had been taken home by their parents. Um, so that was, that, was, that was very interesting because, you know, of course, rumors were running rampant, uh, as they often do in a situation like that. And... I, some some of the rumors were correct, some were not. You have to remember this is the pre-cell phone era, really. Students, it was a very rare thing for a middle schooler uh, than to have a cell phone. Um, so, yeah, it was it was it was interesting. The, the, I found out about everything that happened when I got home from school around 4 p.m. that day. So everything had already transpired by the time I got back, and I had to have my parents explain it to me as we were watching the news and that was that was an interesting experience um and i i remember uh that evening i um of course i was 11 at the time um i actually <laughs> we didn't have any handheld american flags in our house so i drew my own and I went out to the main roadway and I started waving the flag and people people were honking their horn and stuff like that. Looking back, it seems really silly, but at the time it felt like a really profound and, and good thing to do to kind of get people's spirits up, I think. It's the mind of an 11-year-old. I'm not... I don't know. But anyway, um, I also remember going to sleep that night and specifically thinking to myself that, you know, this, I'm going to, this was a, a historical event. Um, and when I wake up, I'm going to be waking up in a world that's going to be completely different than the one that I went, went to sleep in, which in some ways is true. In a lot of ways, it's not. Um, and we're going to get into that later. Um, now for some other personal connections, that, that was basically my experience on 9-11. I felt a lot of, a lot of fear. Um, 
because you have to remember we, we look at this now with hindsight so we know what the chain of events were that day at the time we really didn't know what was going on we didn't know who perpetrated the attack we don't know who um we 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 don't we we didn't know whether or not there were going to be further attacks. We didn't know uh, stuff like that. So uh, it was it was a very confusing and frightening time, especially uh, living thirty miles away from where one of the, the attacks occurred. So um, it was it, it was an interesting experience as a kid. And of course, in the month after that, we had the DC sniper. Uh, if some of some of you may remember this, a lot of you may not, but uh, Lee Boyd Malvo, go ahead and uh, Google up his name and the other guy. I can't remember his name, but they were essentially uh, for for a lot of us. We thought that the the two incidents were connected. We thought that they were Al Qaeda Al Qaeda operatives. Um, turns out they were just crazy lone wolves. But it created a climate of fear. I remember being very fearful of going to the bus stop in the morning. I was a you know almost 12 and by October 2020 or uh, 2001 um, and I remember a lot of fear and uh, other personal connections um, a my um, my grandmother actually was uh, supposed to be working volunteering at the White House and she was she was at the White House uh, on September 11th so um when I say that the folks on United 93, their actions probably um, prevented my grandmother from dying, that's not an understatement. Um, my grandmother was actually in the White House on the morning of September 11th. If that plane had hit the White House, I'm pretty sure she would not be here. So... Uh, for me, there's a, a personal connection to United 93 and that I am extremely grateful and appreciative of the, the the heroism that these individuals showed. I think the word hero is thrown around way too much these days, and even with connection to September 11th, I think it's thrown around too much. To me, heroic is something that absolutely stands out as selfless sacrifice, things like that. And absolutely, I think the folks on United 93 probably had a good idea that they were not going to make it out alive from what they were doing. And I think they knew, they, they knew um, that their plane was going to be used as a suicide weapon. And I think they, they fully knew what they were doing. And um, I, I would definitely call those folks heroic. Um, so that's one personal connection. Another personal connection is um, the the church that I went to at the time as a kid with my parents. Um, one of the one of the ladies uh, worked as a flight attendant for American Airlines, and she's retired now. Um, but she was actually scheduled to work on September 11th on the plane that flew into the Pentagon, and she was friends with the pilot. I if I remember correctly, his first name was Chick. Um, he was actually also friends with one of the astronauts on the International Space Station. So there's a weird kind of sort of personal connection to that because um, yesterday I saw, I, I actually retweeted it. Um, he, the, the astronaut on the International Space Station recorded a lot of his thoughts while they were up in orbit about what was going on because they could see New York City and what was happening um, from orbit so that's also very interesting I might dig that up and put that in the video description um, so she had a lot of survivors guilt and still does to this day I think I haven't I haven't spoken to those folks in a number of years because um, I I don't go to I don't go to church anymore but um, she dealt with survivor survivors guilt for a long time and still does to this day, I think. Survivor's guilt, for those of you who don't know, it's like um, when there's a catastrophic event or someone you know dies in like an accident or something like that, and you had done something very mundane uh, that prevented you from being present uh, during the accident, 
you, you get something called survivor's guilt. You ask, why was I the lucky one? Why, why, why am I the one who lives? Um, so that's that's something that survivors often have to deal with um, personally. So it's just, and of course, living in the D.C. area, um, a lot of people's families were directly affected by it. Um, folks died at the Pentagon. Uh, and it really was your own backyard being attacked. So that's a unique perspective that a lot of Americans probably don't share. And I'm sharing my experiences as a D.C. resident because I think a lot of attention and uh, focus is given to New York City, and justifiably so, since it was the bigger event of the two, or three, rather. Um, in fact, when I drive up to MC's house, I go past the United 93 crash site all the time. Still haven't stopped there. Probably never will. I consider it to be exhibitionist, and I don't want to support something like that. I think that uh, you can appreciate their actions and sacrifice without having to actually visit the spot. That's just my own personal take. Um, but yeah, my, my, my perspective as a DC resident. Um, another another thing is that a friend of mine, their father was driving at the time on I-395 around the Pentagon, and he saw the plane come in. Like, he physically saw the airliner. Um, and I remember him discussing with me seeing the airplane, which is really funny to me because... You have all these conspiracy theorists now who are saying, oh, a plane didn't hit the Pentagon. A plane was never happened at the Pentagon. There wasn't a plane. And all this other crazy crap that has no um, empirical evidence to support it. I will freely admit that what I am saying here is only an anecdote and it is not itself evidence. But to me, it's fairly convincing when you have somebody say they saw a plane years before people are claiming that there was no plane. To me, that's enough for me to personally say that it's all garbage. The conspiracy theories are garbage. Now, do I think uh, questioning the government is a good thing? Absolutely. Um, is questioning whether they res the, the government responded appropriately before, during, and after 9-11 appropriate? Absolutely. But I think it distracts from it when you start getting into crazy land with stuff like that. So that's all I'm going to say about the conspiracy theories. Um, and I remember visiting the the Navy PX. For those of you who don't know, the PX is the Post Exchange. Uh, I don't remember what they call it specifically for the Navy. I was Army, so uh, it's the Post Exchange PX. But we we went to the Navy PX. Me and my grandfather, who was a Marine, um, we went to the PX. I think about I don't remember the time frame, but I do know that the Pentagon was still burning at that point. Uh, and that was a really interesting experience. Um, a lot of heavily armed presence there. Um, it was just spooky. It was really spooky. Uh, seeing the hole in the Pentagon was quite an experience, especially for a young kid, 11 years old. And of course, 9-11 in general, culturally speaking, was a really shocking thing because um, death and destruction was so violently thrown in your face and you couldn't escape it. And that wasn't normal. And it isn't normal today. Um, all the, all the, the, the sorrow, uh, the, the, the tragedy, and everything was, and the violence, and the hatred, all of it was just thrown in your face. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just constantly on the TV. Um, it's something that I have not seen since at all remotely in the media. So that's roughly my thought and experience with 9-11 and what happened actually on that day in general. So I talked with my students a bit about their perspective because to me it's very fascinating because as somebody who comes from a social science background, um, I'm very interested in analyzing things, looking for data points and stuff like that and looking at the bigger picture and the data instead of letting my emotions uh, rule the way that I look at things. So to me, 9-11 is fascinating to look at as a social scientist because not in like an entertaining way, but more so in an, an analysis kind of way because it truly was a very unique event uh, socially, politically, economically, everything. So, um, 
for me, the perspective of my of my students is very fascinating because they were either barely alive or not alive at all during 9-11, and they have grown up knowing only perpetual warfare in the national security state. So I picked their brains a little bit about what they thought about the legacy of 9-11 and uh, the things that changed in our country and in the Western world as a result of that. And the consensus that I, I seemed to get from people was that, to them, it was probably the equivalent of what the fall of the Berlin Wall was to me. Now, some of my older viewers are probably going to feel feel a bit dated now, but I was not alive during the fall of the Berlin Wall. That happened, I believe, in October of 1989, and I was born in January of 1990. So it's an event that it played... It, a significant role in the culture and politics of the time that I grew up in um, as a child of the end of the Cold War and the po the new post-Cold War period of the 90s, it was a big event. But I didn't experience it. I, I have no frame of reference for what it was like to experience the collapse of the Soviet Union because I was two years old at the time. By the time uh, every single one of the nations of the Soviet Union had uh, separated out and the collapse had been complete. The collapse was complete by 1992, so I was I was two at the time. The majority of the collapse happened in 1991. So that's that's kind of the consensus that we all came to is that for them, um, it was a lot like that. They had some interesting things to say. Um, a lot of them did not know what the direct cause of September 11th was, what Al-Qaeda's main motivations were. They did not know. So they were learning that for the first time today in my class, like 95% of each class. This is a large sample size, too. I, I talked to about 250, 300 students today, and I'd say 95% of them uh, raised their hand when I asked them if they were hearing the information I told them for the first time which is kind of fascinating to me. Um, if you'll recall, at the time, in 2001, 2002, 2003, the standard line was, Al-Qaeda attacked us because uh, they hate our freedom, or because we are free, which to me as a social scientist is just a completely asinine and stupid... I don't want to say stupid, but it's, 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 it's such a lazy answer to that question that it's completely useless and not even worth addressing academically. Um, if you actually go and look at what Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda said were the reasons for attacking the United States, they specifically mention and state that the number one reason is because the United States stations troops in Saudi Arabia on Holy Land, which is something that very few people understand, that while it's not justified by any stretch of the imagination uh, that the United States foreign policy directly fed into the reasons why Al-Qaeda attacked the United States. Um, there were a number of other reasons. And so my students heard that for the first time. They had heard that September 11th was caused because the terrorists hate our freedom. Which is true kind of in a sense in that they despise western values that run contrary to very strict interpretations of the Quran and I have to be really careful here um, any criticism that I have in this video of Islam is not per se criticism of individual Muslims okay you have to understand that if you are a Muslim viewer of mine um, please understand that I love you as an individual. I really do. But I very strongly disagree with a lot of the tenets of your religion. And that doesn't have anything to do with you as a person. It has to do with the ideology. Um, and in that sense, Wahhabism, the very strict uh, interpretation of Islam that Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden um, subscribed and subscribed to um, fed into the attack but you have to understand terrorism is a political thing uh, it's not the actions of crazy people 
Rather, it is the actions of political extremists who feel they have nothing to lose and are completely disenfranchised from the current order and are willing to resort to violence to uh, further their political objectives through fear. Terrorism, and you get a terrorist when you combine those three things. Extremism, nothing to lose, and a willingness to act out violently. That's how you make a terrorist. And you have to understand terrorism is a political um, tool of violence. It is designed to inflict fear and elicit a response politically induced by fear. Al-Qaeda had political objectives to remove the United States' presence from the Middle East, to stop the United States from meddling in the affairs of foreign uh, nations, particularly the Middle East, in fact, just the Middle East and Central Asia, and to establish an Islamic caliphate. Those are basically their three um, political aims, or were in, in 2001. Um, and to that end, their attack was pretty effective. Honestly, 9-11 was an extremely effective event for Al-Qaeda. Um, of course, today we've practically dismantled their whole network and they're very broken apart at this point. But Al-Qaeda, um, absolutely, I think the, the attack was effective for the following reasons. 9-11 was highly symbolic. Their choice of targets was not random at all. Uh, you have the, the World Trade Center, which is the symbol of globalism, financial globalism, and you, the U.S. dollar, and the superiority of the American uh, capital system. Okay? So they attacked both of those towers. They attacked the Pentagon, which is the, um, the political center of the United States military. It is the headquarters of the United States military in many respects. I'm not going to get into how the different commands are formed and where they're headquartered and stuff like that, but the Pentagon is considered to be the major symbol of U.S. military power. The fourth plane that went down uh, in Pennsylvania the one that I said was probably going to hit the White House. A lot of intelligence shows that their intended target was most likely the White House. Might have also been the U.S. Capitol building, but it's widely accepted that it was going to be a um, target of one of the branches of the federal government. And that was intended to be hitting America's political power. All very symbolic. Uh, losing the White House, we probably would not have lost the president. I mean, he wasn't even in Washington at the time, but you have to understand it's all about symbolism. Striking directly at America's financial, military, and political power. So you need to think about that. Um, their goal wasn't so much to kill as many people as possible. It was to strike as much fear into the American people as possible while at the same time creating a message for domestic consumption in the Middle East. That Al-Qaeda is powerful and can hit at American power, military, economic, and political. So keep that in mind. One of the things that I brought up with my students is that terrorism as a tactic is not born out of being crazy and it is not necessarily born out of religious extremism. Um, Suicide bombing in particular is interesting to study because a lot of people incorrectly s assume that a suicide bomber necessarily has to be of uh, a religious persuasion, that they have to believe that they're going to be rewarded in the afterlife, and that's not true. Um, the organization that has carried out the, most num the highest number of successful suicide bombings is, in fact, the Tamil Tigers in Sri Lanka. Um, you get a suicide bomber again when you have a, a, a usually a young person who believes they have no future in the current order and they hate the current order and feel like they can't change it at all and they hate it so much that they are willing to die in order to inflict violence that they believe will bring about political change okay it has n it has very little to do with religion in general that has that's the icing on the cake in some cases i think 
Um, certainly there are true believers, but at the same time, I, it's, it's too simplistic to say that everyone who's a suicide bomber is crazy. Um, I think it has a lot to do with political objectives too. Willing to die for a cause larger than oneself and to use yourself literally as a weapon in doing so. Um, so yeah, those are, those are my thoughts on, on the subject. In terms of uh, cultural change in the United States and in the Western world, we are certainly, and this is where I need to be careful, we, we, a lot has certainly changed, and I don't think necessarily for the better. Uh, I talked about briefly in my classes the difference between the Transportation Security Administration, the TSA, and uh, the way that Israel approaches airline security at Tel Aviv Airport. Um, basically the difference being that the United States takes a screen and handle every passenger approach and they kind of ignore the luggage some uh, to a degree um, whereas in Israel and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments but the impression that I'm under is that their security is very luggage focused and is uh, focused on um, inspecting the luggage and looking for individual people instead of having people line up and be screened individually they have uh, people who are highly trained in psychology in order to find out suspicious persons and then pull them aside. So that's one example where I think we've fumbled. Um, TSA security lines themselves are very target rich environments. I'll let you f use your imagination to figure out the rest. I think that TSA lines are incredibly insecure in very unsafe places potentially. Because you have a large group of people <laughs> just standing sometimes for hours altogether before they've been checked think about that <laughs> um, we have the Patriot Act we have the NSA surveillance um, these are all things that uh, I think we need to revisit as a society and uh, we, we have some tough questions to ask was 9-11 something that we can expect to happen many times again or was it a black swan event um, by Plague Swan event, I'm talking about an outlier. An outlier is something that uh, is part of a data set that does not usually describe the data set in general. Think of like when you are, have a data set, let's say you're measuring salaries of a certain group of people, and you have most salaries falling between a range of 20000 and 60000 let's say. And then you have one guy who earns $150 million a year, who's also included in the data set. Now his his salary throws the average way off. But he's just one person. And if you use median to measure the center of the data set, that is a much more accurate measure of center for that data set. So in the same way, was 9-11 an outlier? Was it a black swan event? Is it something that we should not expect to happen frequently? Or is it something that we indeed need to be extra vigilant about and have had an appropriate response to? This is a question that's being highly debated in academic circles right now. Um, and it's something I particularly like to weigh in on. Um, I tend to take the view that 9-11 was more of a, a, an outlier, more of a black swan event. Um, but again, we have to be careful because 9-11 demonstrates that there's a very real danger to this sort of stuff. So uh, finding that, that balance is going to be very important as we go forward into the future. And that's a um, that's something that our generation, people my age and older and younger, are going to have to deal with going forward because we've made a lot of rapid changes politically in this country um, right after 9-11 that are going to be very difficult to undo if we want to undo them at any point. So that's something definitely that people need to realize and keep in mind. So I think I'm reaching the end here of what I want to say. Um, I've never really gotten my thoughts down in a concise manner on this subject. I've just had my general thoughts and feelings kind of buzzing around for years. So hopefully this was an interesting look at this subject for you guys. I really appreciate those of you who have watched the entire thing up to this point because we are currently sitting at about 29 minutes of video as I'm looking. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, 
this has been me just kind of free forming my thoughts so again hopefully this was a good a good video for you guys um, let me know in the comments what were your personal experiences with September 11th what are your personal thoughts on it the, is it was it a black swan event is it something we can expect again in the future do you think the United States federal government has gone too far in its approach to terrorism do you think it has not done enough do you agree with the military interventions that happened fr uh, following September 11th do you disagree with them what are your thoughts I'm interested I would like to know so feel free to comment below and if you haven't done so, leave a thumbs up on the video. I uh, would appreciate that. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great night.